What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, you've come to the right place. The gaming industry is in an absolute mess right now, and you know, I ain't exactly surprised. It seems like the corporate overlords that run the show are more concerned with diversity, forcing their employees to work day and night to fill absurd quotas and milking their players for all they're worth with absurd microtransaction schemes rather than treating their employees right and, well, you know, actually making good games. Which is weird, right? You run a company whose bread and butter is making video games and you don't even bother making them good? Like, what's with that, huh? I'm sure as you all know, Activision and Blizzard have been in a heap in trouble for the past while. What with the whole sexism, sexual harassment lawsuits going on, I see a lot of people condemning the company for everything coming out. Obviously, if what's being spurred on is true, then by all means, they won't see a cent from me, and I'm sure ditto goes for a lot of other people. But in this particular story, Activision and Blizzard, they don't look good at all. And these ain't accusations. These are things you can see with your very own eyes. They've been trying to participate in a little bit of union busting. I suppose a sub-company of Activision, Raven Software, had a third of its quality assurance guys laid off while promoting some others. No wonder games suck these days. They're laying off the people whose literal job it is to make sure the game's actually good. In response to these layoffs, some employees who are real fed up with everything going on are doing walkouts and forming a union, which seems to be a first for the gaming industry. Trucking, railroads, and a lot of stuff in the manufacturing business, they got unions and stuff like that, but the games industry don't got anything of the like, and based on the news that's been coming out for the past few years, seems like it's a bit overdue, huh? In response to all of this, Activision Blizzard sent this note out to its employees, and to say the least, it does not paint them in a very good light. First two paragraphs is public relations filler. You can read it if you like, but I'm not really interested in it. Third paragraph is really what raises my eyebrows, though. As you may have seen yesterday, there was a communication supported by the Communications Worker of America, CWA, that asked employees to sign and submit union authorization cards. I want to be clear about this. The leadership of Activision Blizzard supports your right under the National Labor Relations Act to make your own decision about whether or not to join a union. Where Hell yeah, you damn well better, because I mean, it's the law. Companies are legally, not even obligated, required to respect working unions and the right to form one. But hats off to these guys, I guess, because they support something that they're pretty much forced to. Really setting the bar low, huh? As you make this decision for your future, we ask only that you take time to consider the consequences of your signature on the binding legal document presented to you by the CWA. Once you sign that document, you will have signed over to the CWA the exclusive right to represent you for the purposes of collective bargaining concerning all terms and conditions of employment. That means that your ability to negotiate all your own working conditions will be turned over to CWA, just as the document says. I mean, that's the point of a workers union to have people representing the workers of the company you know so they can protect them from their corporate overlords in case the integrity of the trade is being threatened and like what's the alternative not having a union being forced to bend to the whim of whatever mr chief executive officer man says fat chance the only reason you're engaging in this PR crusade is because you were called out, so you're doing all this at the very last second. Don't pretend that you're fit to represent your employees. It's really looking to be that that just ain't the case. Achieving our workplace culture aspirations will best occur through active, transparent dialogue between leaders and employees that we can act upon quickly. That is the better path than simply signing an electronic form offered to you by CWA or awaiting the outcome of a legally mandated and regulated bargaining process sometime in the future. Yeah, we've been putting you through hell for the past few years. We literally have allegations of employee mistreatment and it took us till now to, you know, really do anything about it. But it's better than the alternative, which is getting yourself some fair representation. Jesus, man. I think this is a pretty interesting paragraph, because throughout the note, they kind of tiptoe around the union bit, but here they're pretty much begging, please don't join the union, please man, we gotta have the ability to abuse you at our every whim, please don't join that union for God's sake, we're actually gonna have to become good bosses, we're gonna have to uphold ethics and stuff, oh God. If we fail to achieve the workplace goals we have set forth, if we fail to do the things we've committed to doing, then of course we will still always have the right to engage with and vote for CWA. Way, but we are confident that we will make the progress we've previously pledged to make and create a workplace with you that we can all be proud of. Dude, if I worked at Activision, Blizzard, or one of their sub companies, I guess, and I was on the fence about joining this union of theirs, dude, this would make me say, holy shit, I need myself a union. 
If your company says you don't need a union, dude, you probably need a union. And you know, honestly, I think this is just what the industry needs. A union. With everything coming out of the gaming business at this point, I think it's high time that the workers got together and say no. This is shaping up to be a win in the industry, which in an industry with not a lot of wins, well, I think it's well earned. So, old news, but at this point, you should know that I'm not exactly adapted towards breaking situations, but a Sony vice president got caught red-handed trying to engage in sex with a minor. The senior vice president of PlayStation Network, George Cacciopo, is that how you say it? I don't know. Was caught by an independent pedophile hunting group known as People v Preds for allegedly trying to meet with a 15 year old boy for sex. So it's kind of like the EDP 445 situation. This George guy got himself into a sting op where he was baiting into sexting and meeting with a minor only to, well, get confronted. Below, we've got some texts. I won't read them because I just ate and this stuff is absolutely stomach churning. But in summary, they proved that George was well aware of the age, arranged the meetup, and sent some, uh, and sent some pictures of their genitals as well. Attached as well is a video, which we'll watch. By the way, one minute of this video is literally the goddamn intro. It's one thing to have a needlessly long intro, I'll admit my intro's pretty long, but to have a minute long intro and have it take up half the video, I'm getting off topic, let's give it a watch. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Good. Are you Jeff? No. Hey, what's up, Jeff? How's it going? Good. Doing good. Who you out here to meet tonight, Jeff? Mike. Jeff. So, something I notice is, this guy don't have any backup. No cops to accompany him, nothing. These situations, I feel like they can turn south real quick. Real unsafe and unprofessional on the recorder's part. That's for sure. We can have a conversation or I can call the cops, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Jeff. Mm -hmm. I can I can call the cops or we can have a conversation. No. You want it? Jeff. You want to have a con- Jeff. I got your face on video, you scumbag. You want me to call the cops? All right, so this is where the video gets. It gets kind of spurgy. All right, I'll call the cops. You invited over a 15-year-old kid tonight to have sex. Excuse me, everybody. This guy invited over a 15-year-old boy to have sex with tonight. You want me to get louder? You want to have a conversation? May I know the purpose of your visit? Hey, you want to get you want me to get louder? You want to have a conversation? All right, you want me to get loud? Sorry. Excuse me, everybody. This guy invited over a 15-year-old boy to have sex with him tonight. Are oh, you hiding up there? All right, so you can see it right here. He goes to the side of the street and he screams like an absolute lunatic. Like seriously, have tempted to say that this guy should go to the loony bin. Not professional, probably not safe, and I feel like it wouldn't look good in court either. Pretty obvious this guy's an amateur of some sort. I don't think someone who's been in the, I guess, predator hunting industry would do something like this. Apparently the vice president guy got fired, which good riddance. He'll probably never work at another high-end position again. He's currently being investigated by police as well, which, I mean, hopefully the guy gets arrested, never sees sunlight ever again, although frankly, it might just be another case where the person who did all the busting made a lot of mistakes along the way so with court technicalities he'll get off kind of like edp i guess guy got caught red-handed but since the guys who caught him weren't exactly the best in the industry well he's still roaming the streets god knows what he's doing right now that's for sure something that i found interesting was how silent a lot of the gaming press was regarding the matter you know when people leaked scott cawthon's political donations or the fact that a christian game developer was pro-life the game journals, they were on it like syrup on pancakes. And then all of a sudden, a high-level executive gets busted for trying to hook up with a minor. It goes viral, everyone's talking about it. But all that's coming out of the media outlets are crickets. They did end up making articles, but only days after everything went down. To be fair, these are heavy allegations, but it's big news that people ought to know about. The reasons for the hesitant nature of the game journalist media is because, well, it's pretty simple. Gaming journalists have connections to these companies, companies like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo. They get early access to everything, be it news, review copies, all that. It's the reason why games that aren't that good or, you know, oftentimes straight up horrible, get favorable reviews or higher ratings than they should because they don't want to risk losing those connections. Probably the same thing here, a higher up getting busted for this kind of stuff it ain't good for PR. So, since these hack journalists want to keep their connections, they stay silent on this kind of stuff. 
Just another reason you can't trust the gaming media. But that's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, do old Jackie favor, Ryan. Keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.